Welcome to my channel and to today's episode of Daily News Clips. Before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming here and for watching my videos and for your support. I really do appreciate it. The first item that I have on today's agenda is entitled DHS Report ISIS Smuggles 400 Plus Illegal Aliens Through Biden's Open Border. According to a shocking new report from the New York Post, the Biden Department of Homeland Security has acknowledged that an ISIS-affiliated human smuggling network has brought more than 400 illegal aliens into the United States, and the federal government has lost track of at least 50 of them. The revelations have further raised concerns about the terrorist threat from the ongoing border crisis. Even more astonishingly, according to three anonymous Biden administration officials, many of the 400 persons of interest were released into the country by Customs and Border Protection because they were not on the government's terrorism watch list. Now, however, border officials are scrambling to track them down following the discovery of information that suggests a potential tie to ISIS, specifically ISIS-K. Well, there will be a terrorist attack inside of America. Mark my words. There will be. And there will likely be some in Europe too, and they may all be coordinated on the same day or the same season because the elites don't care about you. They don't care if a terrorist kills you. They only care if the terrorist kills one of them and they're not going to let that happen, but they'll sure let them come after you. All I can tell you is try to be prepared, avoid large crowds and that kind of thing. And this is kind of a follow-up to that. Senator Blackburn demands answers from Biden administration on release of illegal immigrants tied to ISIS. <clears throat> Senator Marsha Blackburn, Republican of Tennessee, is seeking a full account of the eight Tajikistani nationals who were allegedly released by the Biden administration and subsequently arrested by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement for alleged terrorist ties to ISIS. Blackburn has sent a letter to Homeland Security Treasury a DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas and FBI Director Christopher Wray demanding answers as to how these suspected terrorists allegedly passed through screening by Customs and Border Protection with clean background checks. You know, there was a time when I thought Congress investigating these things was a worthwhile enterprise but I no longer do. They're just dog and pony shows is what they are. They don't have any power and they don't use the power that they have. They can't enforce anything and they can't make the administration investigate itself. So they're bas basically a uh, toothless organization that all they can do is puff up their chests and scream about how great they are and how terrible the other side is. It's, it's just, it, it's theater. It, it is absolutely theater. And its purpose, its design, is to distract you from what they're doing to our country. That's all it is. I don't care which side of the aisle you're on. Republican, Democrat, makes no difference at all. Finally, the third article that I have is Substack in the Spirit of 1776. Uh, the, the American Revolution was written into existence by self-published pamphlets like this one. Adams, this is John Adams, who was our third president, said historians should investigate the, 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 this revolution of the mind and he advised them to consult three primary sources, the newspapers, the records of the 13 colonial legislatures, and the pamphlets. The pamphlets? Yes, they were key. Above all, there were pamphlets, writes historian Bernard Balin, 
a Harvard University professor who more than a century later took up the Adams challenge. Pamphlets were booklets consisting of a few printer sheets folded in various ways to make various sizes and numbers of pages and sold. The pages stitched together loose, loosely, unbound and uncovered, usually for a shilling or two. So what Adams is saying and what the historian is saying is that a major part of the reason why America had a revolution and why that revolution succeeded is because people were reading these pamphlets. And so he, what he's doing, what this writer is doing, is drawing a comparison between what was done in, 17, in the 1760s and 70s to what's being done now. Well, this is America, my friend, and when Balin describes the pamphlets, which, remember, provided the ideological origins of the American Revolution, he could easily be describing the future blogosphere. And I think that's true. I think that's true. Uh, basically, the Internet has broken the media. They no longer have exclusive access to information. Uh, they can scream disinformation and misinformation until they turn blue, but it doesn't stop people from reading it. It doesn't stop people from thinking for themselves. It was the passionate pamphleteers, some famous, others long forgotten, and thus anonymous to us, who laid the groundwork for what we enjoy today. So it's a pleasure and a privilege to continue pamphleteering on Substack in furtherance of one hopes a continually better, more peaceful, and healthier world. Thanks for reading. Fascinating article. As always, I'll put the links in the description so that you can read these for yourself if you're interested. And I pray for you that God will bless you with all of his love and all of his grace and all of his mercy and all of his joy and more than anything with all of his peace that passes your understanding. I pray for the same thing for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam era vet out.